Welcome to the Particle Seminar. Today you will learn how to use the Phenom Electron Scanning Microscope with image processing software to obtain better particle data. Your host is Cliff Matheson, Applications Engineer. First we're going to present you with a new solution for combining image processing software with an inexpensive SEM and use these two tools to generate statistical analysis. Secondly, we're going to present you with a basic overview of which industries are using particle size detection to help them develop better formulations. After that, we're going to learn why it's important to use microscopy tools for better accuracy and understanding the morphology of particles. Next, we're going to learn to take a 3D image of particles using FEI's Phenom, and then open that image with particle size analysis software to gather and analyze particle size data. Finally, we're going to open the results using a spreadsheet. This webinar is very important for R&D and Q&A engineers in any industry who are dependent upon particle analysis and characterization for product development. It's also important for anyone who requires submicron particle morphology and size data for analysis and documentation. What exactly is the problem that we're trying to solve? So in a lot of today's major industries, they use particles in their final products. So understanding not only the particle size, but also the morphology of these particles is very important to people doing research in those industries. Uh, for instance, in the pharmaceutical industry, understanding the particle size and morphology and making sure that they're correct is going to really affect the final outcome of the product. Uh, so in the pharmaceutical application, it may affect the bioavailability of the final product. Well, that sounds important. Uh, what other examples in other industries can you give us? So also in the food and cosmetic industry, particle research is important as well. So the morphology and particle size may affect the shelf life or the uh, texture of the final product. So research uh, scientists and quality engineers both need to be doing this in these industries. How do they go about doing it? Well, traditionally, they're going to use two tools to accomplish these tasks. The first tool is a particle size analyzer, and that's going to basically just give them particle size data. The second tool is uh, for understanding the morphology of these particles, and traditionally for that, you're going to use a scanning electron microscope, uh, especially since a lot of today's particles are getting very small, uh, much below one micron in size. So we're talking about expensive, specialized, complex tools that require different types of expertise to operate. We have a better way with Phenom. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, we absolutely do have a better way. Um, the Phenom is a tabletop SEM, so it's going to give you that morphology data that a traditional SEM would. However, you can also use the files that are captured with the Phenom and use those in conjunction with a off-the-shelf uh, particle sizing software to actually get particle size data um, about your samples. So what type of software is this exactly? So there are several different types of software. Um, there's open source software such as ImageJ um, that's available free online that you can actually use for particle size analysis. Um, and there are also some more advanced uh, applications and software platforms as well, such as Scandium, uh, which is available off the shelf through Olympus. Wow, that's exciting. Now I see you've queued up an image here. Can you tell us a little bit about it? There are two things to pay attention to. So the first is the morphology. Now, we get morphology on this image as we would with any other SEM. So we can see that typically a lot of the, the particles in here are spherical in shape. However, we also have some outliers here as well. Uh, particles like this one uh, and this one here are not spherical in shape. Uh, and these may cause problems in a lot of today's products that use particles. Now, the other thing to pay attention to is there's also some uh, variance in the size of these particles. So there are some larger particles here and here, um, as well as here. However, there are also some smaller particles. So even with the naked eye, you can see that there is variance among these particles. Now, uh, just looking at them quickly, you're not going to be able to get any statistical data out of that. However, you can take this image, which is stored uh, with a TIFF header, plug it into one of these off-the-shelf software platforms, and actually get statistically meaningful data out of them. So which industries are using particle size detection in their research? The first industry is the pharmaceutical industry, where they use particle size to determine bioavailability of their products. The second industry is cosmetics, where texture and feel are often affected by the particle size. The third major industry is the food industry, where particle size can affect shelf life, texture, and taste of the final product. So why would you use a phenom over a traditional particle size analyzer? Well, first of all, a particle size analyzer is going to capture only particle size, not particle morphology, whereas the phenom is going to capture particle size and morphology, giving you a 3D understanding of your particles. Since morphology greatly affects the reaction rate, flow rate, and cohesion of particles, the phenom is going to give users the whole experience and better understanding of their particles.
So now we're going to go over a few pointers for how to capture images of particles using the phenom. First of all, the particles must be well dispersed on the sample stub. Poor dispersion can result in clustering and inaccurate results using the particle size software. Results should also always be stored in a TIFF format because JPEG and BMP formats do not store measurement data for easy processing. Now we mentioned that poor dispersion can result in inaccurate data in particle size detection. Here's why. Over on the left-hand side of the screen, we have an image of poorly dispersed particles, and you can see that particles are lying one on top of another. This is going to give us poor results in our particle size software. However, on the right-hand side of the screen, we can see very well dispersed particles in this image, and this is going to give us highly accurate results in our Scandium software. So now that you've seen what a well dispersed particle sample looks like, here are a few tips for how to prep the sample yourself. First, when prepping a sample, remember a little bit goes a long way you need only apply a little bit of the sample to your stub. When you're done loading your sample into the phenom, collect images towards the edge of your sample region. The sample will tend to be better dispersed towards the edges. As we mentioned earlier, all images should be stored in TIFF format. You can do this by going to the settings menu on the phenom user interface and pressing the TIFF button near the bottom left hand corner. So now that you have a better understanding of the advantages of using particle size software, we're going to go ahead and give you a live demonstration of Scandium, one of the many particle sizing softwares on the market today. What you see in front of you now is the Scandium user interface. The first step that I want to take is opening an image. And I do that by going to the top left hand side of the screen, clicking File, Open, and then double clicking on the image that I'd like to analyze. Now that I've opened my image, the first step I want to take is to correctly set the contrast thresholds of the image. And I do that by going to the detection menu, clicking on set thresholds, and you'll notice the set thresholds menu now comes up. Now the idea here is to use the slider bar at the bottom to increase the amount of usable area that's going to be included in the detection while decreasing the amount of noise. And you'll notice if I move the bar too far to the left, we start including a lot of noise here, which aren't real particles. Whereas if I move it back over to the right, I can reduce all that noise and maximize the amount of area that's going to be included in my detection. You can also automatically detect this by clicking the Auto button over on the right. Once you're satisfied with your threshold settings, click OK. The next step is to return to the Analysis toolbar click on the Define Measurements icon, and that's going to bring up a list of measurements that we can include in our detection. And For this application, we want to make sure area is included. Next step is to click OK, return to the Analysis Toolbar, and click Detect. Now that the software has performed an analysis of all the measurements we specified in the Define Measurements menu, we need to go up to the Analysis Toolbar, click on the Particle Results icon, and now a table with all the results will be displayed on the screen. Most importantly, in the far right, we have a column for area measurement. And if we scroll down, we can see that we've measured a total of 228 particles on this particular image. What I'd like to do now is display my results graphically in a histogram. In order to do so, I need to go back up to my Analysis Toolbar, click on my Define Classification icon, click on the icon that says Compute, and in this Compute Classification menu, I can define the number of bins that my particles are going to be grouped into. I'm going to go ahead and arbitrarily pick the number 30, click on the Auto icon, and then click OK. Now I'm going to go ahead and click OK again. Scroll back up to the area column and right click on it. Scroll down to where it says histogram. Select sample area as my classification scheme and now press OK. And now you'll have a histogram in front of you with the specified number of bins we selected earlier. And we can change the amount of bins, and it will simply change the shape of the graph. I can now right-click on my histogram, click on the 
click Change. And here I can modify the labels of my X and Y axis. I'm going to call the X axis bin and the Y axis particle count. Click OK and you'll see the axis names have now been changed. Each pin on the histogram corresponds to a certain range of particle sizes. To see what exactly those ranges are, we can simply minimize the histogram and a sheet has automatically been generated that displays the bin number as well as the range of particle sizes that are in that particular bin. For instance, bin number 4 contains particle sizes ranging from 14.3 square microns to 15.73 square microns. And we can see that there are 19 particles that fit that criteria. So now you've seen how you can use Phenom images with Scandium software. And here are a few takeaways for today. First of all, the Phenom is going to provide you with greater efficiency. It provides a basic particle size analysis tool and SEM in one package. It also gives you greater effectiveness. It's easy to use and requires no additional training, and researchers can get the results quickly. The Phenom also produces high quality results. You can attain 24,000 times magnification with 30 nanometer resolution. You have the ability to identify agglomerates quickly. The Phenom also shows shape, size, and distribution of particles in minutes when used in conjunction with Scandium software. Thank you for attending the Phenom Particle Seminar. To learn more about Phenom, go to www.phenomworld.com.